So in this video, we are going to use the procedural vegetation editor. We are going to make some mega plants. We are also going to explore the mega plants from Quixel. This is a complete beginner friendly video. So I'm going to go step by step, explain everything. And by the end of the video, you're going to have a pretty comprehensive understanding of how this system works. Okay, so let's get started. So I hope you have downloaded Unreal Engine 5.7. Okay, so as you can see, this is the new system in action. So to start, we need to enable the plugin. So let's go to plugins and you need to search for procedural vegetation editor. So this is the main plugin that gives us that functionality to make foliage in Unreal Engine 5. Make sure that you enable this. After that, go to your project settings and we also need to enable Nanite. So this is Nanite for foliage. So if you saw the Witcher 4 demo, you know what I'm talking about. This is the new voxelized Nanite foliage system and it's pretty cool. So this is the asset zoom map and this is located under the plugins. So first of all, to see this, you can go right here and make sure that these are enabled. So show engine content, show plugins content and show local content. This is under the plugins content. So after you enable that, go to plugins and right here you need to scroll down. So this is where the map is located. So once you open the map, you're going to see these trees and you can see these are all skeletal meshes. We also have a global wind object here. So this basically is used to control the wind direction and the wind intensity. So you could maybe increase the speed, rotate this. Okay, so let me select this. And you'll notice that these are PCGs. So you can go right here and you see all the PCG elements. So let's click on the first element. And you'll notice that these are skeletal meshes. These are instant skeletal meshes. So the stream mesh is using a rig for the wind effects and all of that. It is not using the shader stuff. And these trees are totally 100% geometry. The leaves also are meshes. So you can see the bone hierarchy here. In order to better visualize bones, you can enable this. So for example, you can select any bone and I could rotate this like that. Okay, this is pretty cool. Let me turn the bone visualization off. Here you can do one more thing. So to confirm, you can search for Nanite. And you can see Nanite is enabled. And here you can see the new nanite mode. So this uses the new voxelization tessellation method. And this is really cool. So when your mesh goes away from the camera, uh, those leaves are turned into like voxels. I mean, this mesh is kind of represented as a voxel mesh. That way you get like really superior lighting. Now let me show you how you can make your foliage assets. So let's go to foliage. And here you need to create a procedural vegetation asset. Okay, so this is going to prompt a window with some templates. These are default templates. I'm going to show you how you can add templates from Quixel Megascans. But for now, let's select the second one. And you can double click on this. And this opens the procedural vegetation editor. So this is where you make your foliage asset. Now, this works using nodes. You stack a bunch of nodes and you get your free representation. So on the left, we have the viewport right there. On the right, we have the node graph. So first in the viewport, you have some basic options here. You can change the lighting. You can also enable the floor, disable the floor. Right here, you also have the option to enable the mannequin. So this is super useful, you know, a real world reference is super useful. Okay, now let's go to the node graph. In the beginning, we have the input node. Now, this is the template node that we selected. 
and this has four outputs right now at the time of recording this video we cannot change the number of outputs and uh, this will change in the future but right now we are locked to this so if you select this node you can see that this gives us a basic skeleton okay now if i zoom out you have four different outputs so you can click on each one of them to view the specific output in your viewport and this node based system is really cool so if you want to like know what a particular node is doing you just click on it and it's going to show you what it's doing in the viewport so let's work on the first chain of nodes okay so let's select the first node and you can see in the viewport a tree disappears we get that uh, rudimentary skeleton again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, select the output node and i'm going to make it persistent so you can press control l to do that so i want to see the final thing while i'm changing settings and different nodes so let's start with the first one this is the carve node carve node is pretty simple you can select the different carve modes i'm going to select from bottom and you can change this slider and this is kind of uh, reducing the height of the tree from the bottom it's kind of like uh, almost cropping it next we have the gravity node this is a very famous uh, node in other programs as well so this adds gravity to your trees so those japanese kind of like bonsai type trees you could make all of those with this so you have the gravity slider there you also have the direction and the angle so you can make some really stylized looking things i mean you could use something like this in a game depends on the scenario what you're going for but this looks really good i'm going to give it a little bit of gravity after that we have the scale node so this is pretty straightforward this controls the size of your tree next we have remove branches and this basically removes the branches based on the type of thing that you have selected there so again this is essential to make lot of variations of the same asset and next we have the mesh builder node so for this one let me go ahead and turn off the last output node so i'm going to press control l to unlock that and then select the mesh builder node So let's go to the wireframe view. And here you can control the density of your mesh, the number of polygons and those kinds of things. So here you can control the loop cuts, the subdivisions and all that stuff. So if you want to optimize your tree maybe reduce the polygons, you can do it right here. After that we have the bone reduction node and this is super useful. So as I mentioned the wind system is using the skeletal mesh so the skeleton and if you have like a very complicated rig if you have like 500 bones it's not going to be that optimized so this is where you have to decide what you want to do it's basically a quality to performance balance and here we can see all our bones right you can see the number of bones in the bottom right there and you could play with the bone uh, density the skeleton density next we have the foliage palette so if you select the foliage palette you're going to see all the different individual components that are used to make up your tree so these are three different static meshes which are basically instanced to make our tree you could swap them out if you want and lastly we have the foliage distributors so i feel that the foliage distributor node is already set up and it works really well by default so i'm not going to override this okay so once you have like made your tree you have finalized your tree um you have the output node so this is where you export your tree to a skeletal mesh so here you can change where your asset is going to be saved you can also change the name of this asset mm -hmm. 
and make sure that voxelize is enabled here you can also disable or enable collisions here so the player is not going to interact with the leaves of this tree so i'm going to enable collision for the bark so once you are happy with the export settings you can export this here you can export the selected node or all nodes you can also do a batch export so i'm going to export the selected node and here you can see the progression of each node what it does to your tree so we have the carve node so after the carve node we added some gravity we removed some branches and we converted this into a mesh after that we used the foliage palette the foliage distributor and finally exported this using the output node we have exported the tree we have three assets here we have the skeleton the skeletal mesh and the physics asset so let's drag the skeletal mesh in our level and you can see this tree looks really good so right now you will notice that the wind is missing we don't have wind on our tree so you can see these trees have wind and this doesn't so this new wind blueprint only supports instant skeletal meshes this does not support manually placed assets and you can't use the foliage panel as well to scatter this asset because the foliage panel doesn't support skeletal meshes so in that workflow you can only use static meshes so if you want wind to work you can simply like go to the pcg and swap out our tree for a existing tree and that's going to give you wind out of the box because the pcg is going to like instance this asset but if you want more control over this you need to create a blueprint so we're going to create a actor blueprint and we're going to nest this asset in this blueprint so open up this blueprint and here we need to add a component called the instant skin mesh so this is basically the instant skeletal mesh so once you add that you need to select that and right here you need to reference your asset so i'm going to reference my tree asset and here select the wind asset this comes by default and our tree is not visible in the viewport yet so we need to do one more thing we need to add a instance so scroll down and here under instances you need to add a instance so now let's add this in the viewport and there we go we have wind working on this asset looks super cool and now this is a blueprint you know so you can have a lot of control uh, on a per asset basis okay now let's go to fab and at the time of recording this we have five different asset packs these are the same asset packs so these are the quicksilm trees uh, but these are like now made and set up for the new procedural vegetation system and they're calling it mega plants so let's get these okay so you can see we have the european aspen we have the beech we have the norway maple forest this is a really cool asset and we have the classic black alder pack so i'm going to add all of these in my project after adding them you'll see in your folder and let's go to one of these asset packs in the instances you'll see individual components that are used to make up the asset so here we have a lot of different static meshes and skeletal meshes and in this folder you have the template so now you can open this here again you have four different variations of the same asset select the first one let's work on the first one and here you can see we have this and we have the foliage palette so here you can swap out one of these for example i'm going to enable this and i'm going to swap this out with something so you can either swap this out with a static mesh or a skeletal mesh so i'm just going to test this out so i'm going to swap this out with this and there we go so we have that instance here you can override if you want to override this 
But I feel again, the default options for the foliage distributor work really well. And here, if you right click, you can see we don't have a lot of options when it comes to nodes. Like we only have around 10 nodes to play with. I'm sure we'll have a lot more in the future. But for now, it's really simple to get started. So for example, if I wanted to add gravity, you can add the gravity node and maybe completely change the style of this tree. So I'm really liking where this is headed. This is a super powerful system, really easy to learn as well. And this is going to be expanded a lot in future versions of Unreal Engine. So I'm super stoked about that. If you learned something from this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'm going to see you in the next video.